The coffee flowering is one of the most important stages in the coffee process. In our country, Colombia, the coffee flowering depends on the weather and it will change from one region to another one and it will also determine the periods where the harvest will start and finish and how long those harvests will be and how good or bad they will be as well. Some farms have three or four flowerings a year and usually two of them will determine the periods of the main harvest. However, there are some regions in Colombia that have between 17 and 20 flowerings per year, which is a lot. Having this many flowerings in a farm implicates a lot of work for the coffee producers and I am going to tell you why in a minute. At our coffee farms, we classify our flowerings as high, medium and low. High meaning that there is a lot of flowers and they are concentrated within the same period of time. This will usually mean the main harvest. Medium, meaning that there is a lot of flowers but not as many as when there is a high level of flowers and they are somewhat concentrated but is not as big. So that implicates that from those flowers you will have a smaller harvest. Usually we know it as the fly crop. And low, meaning that there is a flower here and there, in one tree and another one, but there isn't really a lot of flowers that will create a lot of cherries at the same time. Meaning that the coffee producer will have some cherries ripening here and there and there won't be a big production when those flowers become coffee cherries. Since the flowers are directly related to the amount of coffee cherries that a coffee tree will produce depending on the weather and also depending on the quality of the flower and the amount of water and nutrients it receives, having a big flowering will mean that you will have a lot of coffee cherries. So coffee farmers are able to somewhat predict the quality of their harvest based on how good their flowering is. If they get a really good flowering with lots of flowers at the same time very concentrated within a short period of time that will mean that they will have a really really good harvest but if the flowering is too spread out then it will mean that they will be having a very spread out harvest that will be probably more difficult to harvest and it will not bring them a whole lot of income up front but more like a distributed income throughout keeping a record of the flowerings and the stages when they happen and the times when they happen is really important for the coffee producers because it can help them make several decisions. The main reason will be knowing when the harvest is going to start. Usually the harvest starts eight months after the flowering. So if I have a lot of flowers today, I know that in eight months I need to be ready to start harvesting. And this means that I have to make some time before eight months to find the pickers that are gonna help me pick my coffee, to collect the materials that I need for the pickers, the bags, the containers, uh, to prepare my equipment, make sure that my coffee pulper is calibrated and if some coffee farmers need to build new raised beds or fix their old raised beds, this is the time to do it. And it needs to be done before the harvest because during the harvest you will not have time to do any of that. Keeping a record of the flowerings will also help producers know when will be the peak times to check for the reproduction of Broca or Roya and to make sure that they attack or prevent these pests so that they have a very healthy harvest. Nowadays, all flowerings count. Long time ago, before we had any Broca in our country, Colombia, Coffee producers will not care for those very little flowerings that will happen sporadically throughout the year and for the cherries that will come from those flowerings because usually it costs more money to pick those cherries than what it costs to just let them get ripe and fall into the ground. So a long time ago, most coffee producers will just leave those cherries fall into the ground rather than pay someone to go for a whole day picking one cherry here and there and at the end of the day, the production of those coffee trees will not be enough to even cover the cost of paying a person to go walk the whole field picking mm, a few cherries here and there. But nowadays, because of the broca, the coffee farmers cannot afford to do that anymore. If you leave coffee cherries on the tree and they fall into the ground, the broca will have a place to go in and stay there waiting for the main harvest and it will have a way to reproduce. So coffee producers will be encouraging the reproduction of broca if they don't pick those cherries. 
So all coffee cherries count and all coffee cherries need to be picked from the tree. Even if sometimes the cost of picking those coffee cherries is higher than the amount of money that coffee producers will get for them. In our case, and I believe it's the case of most coffee producers, we are really excited when we have flowerings that are very concentrated and very abundant because this means that the harvest will be really good and concentrated. And that means that coffee pickers will be able to collect a whole ton of coffee cherries in a short period of time some coffee farms though produce flowers all year round that means that they are producing coffee all year round as well and the harvest is very spread out we have also had harvests that have been very spread out because of the weather when the weather is not appropriate we will get flowerings that are out of time or that are too long or we will get one flowering after the other one meaning that we will be picking coffee most of the year at least for a very long time and it won't be a big amount of coffee so we will be picking little and bits of coffee throughout a certain amount of time and the income will be very low unless you have a big coffee farm that even if it produces just a little bit per tree when you sum up all the amount of trees then it's a good production and it is a good income for the producer which is not the case of most coffee producers in Colombia that are small or that have smaller farms Hopefully you have had a chance to visit a coffee farm during the flowering stage, but if you haven't, I hope you get a chance to do it in the future. The coffee flower is beautiful and also the aroma of the coffee flower is like the most amazing aroma. So as you can see, the coffee flowering is a very important stage and it is also very important that coffee producers pay attention to their flowerings and the times and amounts of their flowering so that they ensure high quality coffees. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was somewhat educational and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.